What is good? We're back. And we got another episode of the FF Dynasty. Got the full tripod here. We're going to hit you with a little moves to make. We're going to do it a little different this week. Going to hit you with a mock draft that we did uh, from last Sunday to this Friday. Um, we're going to compare it from the start of, our, of, of the season ADP that we had. So we're going to see who's falling and who's rising we're gonna split that into two separate shows and talk about you know what you like what you don't like maybe some moves to make off of that uh, buy sell holds possibly there's gonna be all the keywords in here uh, but should be a fun exercise to figure out you know take the temperature a little bit of where we're at uh, market value wise with these guys now I know we're in a, in a generation of human beings who play dynasty week to week for some reason so, you know, all these things can fluctuate a little bit, and it's not a huge sample like we do on the ADP. We, right. we got a huge sample. It's one um, run. But it's, it's, it's one run through, but it was enough to, to have some good conversation on. So we're going to hit the risers first and see who's come up the board and, and who's in their neighborhood these days, what we like and what we don't like. So I think safe to say we all knew Jaden Daniels would be a large riser here. Now, he goes 102 in this one, which, again, if we would have had a larger sample, we could mitigate a little bit of that out. But, hey, I can't, I, I can't make a hard, uh, hard slap on the wrist of saying, hey, don't do that. Probably would have balanced out, you know, to, you know, 106. 104. 104, you know, yeah. somewhere in there. But he's up 23 spots. So for you, you know, Jaden Daniels or... Lamar, Hurts, C.J. Stroud. Do you have a preference there? Where are you landing on Jaden Daniels right this minute? I don't want to slap somebody's wrist for taking him there. I, in this spot, you, you got the first six picks normally, six, seven, eight picks somewhere in there in a super flex is going to be a bunch of quarterbacks. Me personally, I'd probably stick with Stroud. If Patrick Mahomes falls down to five, I know this is a risers, but if somebody's in two, that means somebody's not in two. I would have no problems taking Mahomes. You steady Eddie, yeah. you know he's there for the next you know six eight years heading to the uh, Hall of Fame, but I can't be upset with somebody in the first run that probably couldn't wait to take Jaden Daniels. He's electric, he's a lot of fun, and he has translated a lot of the skills to the NFL probably more than anybody could have asked for. Right? Yeah. No, I'm 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 mostly with you there. Uh, it's not to say that in you know eighteen months that Jaden Daniels. We have maybe we haven't seen much progression out of Jaden Daniels at this point, right? He came onto the scene, everything's going really well, but sometimes we can hit a point where you know we're not get we're not going any any higher for whatever reason. We've seen it. Will there be regression from, from you know from time to time, especially throughout this league. We know how difficult it could be. I know some people probably right now are, are thinking, how could you even consider C.J. Stroud? He's a bust. It was it, w it wasn't any good, and it's like that's just patience is yeah. uh, evaporated. Nobody's allowed to have you know not great weeks here and it's not like you know really too many quarterbacks and or around the league of, of you know not like everything's up and up and up right now everything's you know a little bit more moderate and down uh you know including Patrick Mahomes which you know we're reactionary and well Mahomes stinks now and and so take Jane Daniels again I, I can't really argue with you but up 23 spots there so uh if you wanted to have some wiggle room there to to operate to maybe a, a a pivot off of daniels you're you're still capable of doing that of course and he's, he's he's presenting a very heavy weight behind his name to be oh, able definitely. to you know kind of do whatever you want i'm not saying that i necessarily would at this point a lot of these other names on the list outside of i guess cj stroud with with you know hurts mahomes lamar we've seen them all do it for a long period of time so Hey, you know, yeah. And before you move on, I mean, there are some good stats out there going around about it's been like 20 something games since Patrick Mahomes has scored 20 something fantasy points. Of course, you know, I assume that means that's four point per touchdown pass league setting dependent on that stat. But, you know, Patrick Mahomes is Hollywood Brown never played a snap for him. Right. Might not ever play a snap. That was a one year deal. It's, you know, Rasheed Rice goes out after a couple of weeks. He ain't coming back this year. It definitely it's not working out like the the Chiefs it looked like they right. there was a lot of people in the 5000 yard 50 touchdown club for Patrick Mahomes before the season started. Yeah. Everybody was already said, "Hey, this is come we're going back to his second year Patrick Mahomes. Here it goes." 
And and I was one of them that was lined up to see it. Oh, how could you not? Be? Why wouldn't you want to see it? And you know, and and then boom, 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 dropping like flies over there. And to be honest, they're six and zero. Oh. They don't have to score points. They got the league's best defense, the league's best defensive coordinator. Yeah, mixing with their talent, they embarrass people week in and week out mm-hmm. with their defense. And then Mahomes gets it done. So he doesn't have to put up fantasy points. He's putting up W's. Right. Yeah, and I mean, at the end of the day, that's the game that we're playing. So, hey, take it for what it is. I I think Mahomes is going to be just fine. (laughs) Uh, So, Caleb Williams stays neutral to give you another shot on the rookies there. Caleb was already up really high. We're seeing positive progressions out of of Caleb, obviously, off this week here. Jordan Love was up seven spots here. By this time next year, could be in that top six, right? He's Uh, making his way. He's climbing up. Probably at this point would feel safer long term. Love over Hurts. I know Hurts scores fantasy points in bunches with his feet, but Jordan Love is a way better quarterback than Jalen Hurts. Mm. It's not even close in my eyes. Now, I know that Jordan Love doesn't has no chance of scoring 15 rushing touchdowns in the season either. So you can take that as you will. Mm-hmm. But Jordan Love is ridiculous. And I think, I think he would be higher on this list if he hadn't missed a couple of weeks. Yeah, uh, and, you know, on top of that, that missed a couple of weeks, came back, and then was – slow start you get, right. gotta get it going again gotta get it yeah. going and this last game that they just played against the texans was a, a real good game to watch it was a slug fest oh uh, they, you know yeah dude if, if they weren't turning it over if the packers didn't have three turnovers in the first half right that wouldn't that wouldn't have been as fun of a game for the texans side of things i don't think yeah. I, you know no, I, the texans hey yeah. hey, but we force we force the turnovers yeah uh, that's how it works i understand but yeah th- turnovers things, are fluky and the packers gave it up three times in the first half or it was about to be the packers were rolling things seem awful stable and rising for green bay defenses on the rise it. it's a good way to put it. everything around them's you know good offensive line they've had good success with good running back over there where the eagles are maybe starting to stabilize a little, but you know everybody knows that we're a little on edge with the coaching situation and, and that whole regime right there. So every, interesting, Jordan Love, potential swap out for for Hertz Plus. You might be able to still grab something like that. So that'd be an interesting uh, move. Every to make there. person that I know, being in Charleston, there's a lot of people that come here from the north and stuff and northeast, and everybody that I know that talks about the Eagles or down on them right this second. That was before they went in there and beat up the Giants pretty good. You know, it's a week-to-week league. It's always been a week-to-week league. It'll always be a week-to-week league, and it definitely, for fantasy, it's a week-to-week league. And like yeah. you said, in Dynasty, trying to be a little less week-to-week about it. Right. Got to be. Let's keep it moving here. Okay. Everybody's dying to see the next rookie. Where's Malik Neighbors going to fall? He comes in at 2-1, up 14 spots. I know some people are probably saying, how does he go that late? I mean, it's just a super flex startup draft, and there's mm-hmm. some other really good wide receivers, right? Well, um, not, there's nine quarterbacks off the board, right. so there's only three wide receivers taken in front of him. No, no running backs in front of him. Right. So, you know, Neighbors comes out and, and gets a million targets to start the season. Then he misses a few games. It comes back this week and, and doesn't, you know, put up the production you've been spoiled with and used to spoiled but you know Malik Neighbors is going to be just fine the rookie I'm drawing a blank on him for the Eagles did a really good job on him the, the Eagles pass rush was was back he, uh, Giants missing their best uh yeah the tackle being lineman. out for the tackle uh, Giants Thomas. was huge that was a rough game uh, over there for for the G-men Malik Neighbors is is going to have is going to be just fine I'm not not worried about it at all I don't think anybody is no. uh, but up 14 spots has jumped over Marvin Harrison who I know this isn't the you know the faller show, but down down one spot. So Marv was already up here. Recency bias, and Marvin Harrison's the worst player ever, and we'll talk about that on the on the faller show. So Malik Neighbors has jumped him in this one off draft here. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. Uh, The next biggest riser on this list is 209 Saquon Barkley. Jumping way back up here, 27 spots. As things settle out and settle on, I mean, obviously Barkley just had another huge game against the Giants. Barkley's going to continue to do this the, for the rest of the season. And and something that we've talked about and mentioned, I mean, we could see a great three, four-year run here from Saquon, and then he's worth every penny Yeah, uh, at this 209 spot, right? If he's scoring these points in your lineup, is is hard to argue with that. I mean, but it, one for one, like I, there's no, I, I can't 
sign off on taking Barkley over like a Nico Collins, but right. like you said, but so like Nico it, Collins would be next on the list on the big riser. He's up 18 spots. He's two spots away from where Saquon Barkley is here. Mm-hmm. So last week we had Jay Wayne was floating around on a dynasty daddy and he was showing you these two first round picks for Bijan and two first round picks for Brees Hall. And we're like, why are you trading these guys? Right. Next week in your lineup, you could easily put in Saquon Barkley and feel more confident or as confident as those kind of guys. But those guys are 21, 22 years old, and Saquon's, what, 27? You know, mm-hmm. But like you're saying, if Saquon goes on a three-year run here, CMC-esque, then he's, he's worth this. But he's 27, going at you mm-hmm. know, 28 years old, so like it's, hard, it's hard to you know, line him up and say, I'm going to take him over a Nikos Collins or a Brock Bowers, for instance. Like, Brock Bowers is out there just carrying the team, fantasy teams on his shoulders. And it's just like somebody like that in Dynasty, I understand we got to go win those games, but I, you know, I, maybe I can backfill with a Joe Mixon and make up for not having Saquon Barkley. Mm-hmm. Maybe I can backfill with a, another aging vet like a James Conner. I'm not getting Saquon Barkley's explosion, and he does still have it. I'm not trying to take anything away from Saquon Barkley. In this area of my draft, I would rather put like I mean, there's Gibbs is right in front of him, so in you know seven years younger. But like I'm a Nico Collins or a Brock Bowers or somebody like that who's you know obviously Nico's Nico's not seven years younger than Nico's twenty five. But and you know again the running back position, spending my equity like I take nothing at all the way from Barkley, but he is a running back and he has been hurt and he's more likely Nico is on IR right now, mm-hmm. which is, you know, and, mm-hmm. but he's, he's on IR cause he got, he was running 38 miles an hour past everybody and blew his hamstring Saquon out. hit 22 this week. There he, exactly. He's <laughs> crushing. He's crushing. There's nothing I can say to take away from Saquon's production and most likely his likelihood of doing it in the foreseeable future. It just, the odds are, but obviously in a Brock Bowers is that's not even fair. Like uh, the, you know, Brock Bowers is 20 years old and an absolute stud, but Saquon's a stud too. He's just older and he's a running back. So I'm, I'm going to have to not take him at the two nine in a startup draft, but I don't blame you for putting in that type of points per game in your lineup. I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand it. And you know, I, I get, I get what you're saying. I, I, you know, Nico, I'm fine with, with, putting up there ahead of Saquon if you want to do that so you know Saquon potentially again this is a one one draft sample we we don't like to we like we'd love to do six and get it there but we're in season so but you know it's to show kind of where the market is and and we can fluctuate this you know four or five six spots here but I I don't think Saquon's fallen much much past the third you know three two three three here what a fun exercise too I mean somebody like in quarterbacks dry up quick like I'm one for one I would have in a super flex I would rather have Purdy over Saquon Mm -hmm. just because they're so it's hard to find a reliable quarterback and Purdy's that young and that system and it's not looking great this after this week but Purdy was all the rage he was the best quarterback ever last week and then he goes and faces the Chiefs and all his all of his weapons are hurt but you know uh, just something like that. It's just again. It's I'm just I'm cherry picking a couple people here and there, mm-hmm. but at the same time, Saquon is kicking everybody's butts in every week in the fantasy lineups, and that's really what what matters. Yeah, and again, if you're going to give me three years of production at at a, at a pretty high level, and I you know I know everybody's scared of the running back and and the age cliffs, but I think I think we're going to see that that curve be pushed a few years here coming up with this crop that's that's doing it currently. But so Saquon, you know, there, there's potentially, you know, some weight on Saquon to be able to kind of move around. And we're getting to the season part of the season where you could be potentially moving somebody to a team that's a little bit more with whether it's victory points or. or um, oh, the average. If, or if it's a league if it's average, a league average, or if it's just straight up regular old, you know, points for and, and win loss. We're getting to the point where, you know, things are starting to separate. You're starting to realize what you have. Saquon may have some weight uh, to be able to go get yourself something. Uh, a little younger or or a wide receiver or a quarterback that you might want moving into when you're maybe trying to rebuild here. Maybe you got a little rewarded for hanging on to Saquon for an extra year, even though, you know, you you, you could have probably sold for a, a reasonable profit in the off season. When he went to the Eagles, you got a little bump. Well, now you've gotten uh, three bumps here. Definitely. Uh, so uh, hmm. Kyron Williams, the other one moving up 22 spots here, the forever just, uh, just was on Twitter today and, and, I think is at is at Roto Surgeon or something like that. Never heard of him. Uh, he's a jamoke. Always with. I can't tell if he's serious or not. With how bad things are a lot of the times, but just tripling and quadrupling down on how Kyron's basically a bum. And I'm like, <laughs> but 
things ain't working out over there for the for the Rams right now. They've they've got some good offensive linemen, but they've been all sorts of combinations. Oh, everybody's hurt. Everybody's hurt. They're all the no wide, receivers wide receivers are hurt. They're just out there doing whatever. And yes, I get it. Kyron's scoring a lot of touchdowns, but it's just the same shit as uh, if you take away the forty yard run, if you take away the thirty yard, if you take away the Bo, he, he's out there, he plays a lot, and he scores fucking touchdowns. They're not any good, and he's still getting right. all the reps, right? Mm-hmm. People are going to spend three years until they finally get to say, see, I told you so oh, with Kyron Williams, right? Oh, two years so, from now, it's, they're going to be doubling back on receipts. They're just going to be you know, a- at 3-3. Three, three, I think that's reasonably priced where Kyron Williams you know, should be drafted at this point. I mean, there's really not that many running backs who are getting the usage. And it's like, you know, what do you want? You, you want them to, to be unused and, right. and not scored to i don't really right. you know well and i get it like you're saying his, his production is being propped up by touchdowns and it's like yeah that, that's true but he's also being used a lot he's producing out on the field and they're in the worst shambles they could possibly be in and he's still week in week out giving you rb1 numbers right yeah we you know 22 spots up we did that show in the off season where i was taking your advice and drafting Kyron in late four early fifth in that draft that we did and the show that we made on it and you know like 22 spots he jumps uh, you know i wasn't investing at that point 27 spots to go saquon barkley but 22 spots to go kyron was a great deal i think they've moved up because they've been people are understanding it takes running back points to really win you can only deny somebody for so long and they're just they're just dying to see quorum get in there and it's like kyron's doing everything you would want somebody to do in that situation all right Brock Bowers up 15 spots. I think for everybody, he's pretty much the tight end one locked in at this point because he's, you know, producing at a, at a decent level. They just got rid of at an incredible, Adams. incredible level. Uh, and, it's you know, we enough. got we got quarterbacks that are, you know, not for long over there. We probably got a coach that's not for long over there. So you're going to see a lot of turnover. There's going to be a lot of change going on. But the current Raider staff is using Brock Bowers in ways that I was it was my only concern and now you're gonna have to deal with that once more somebody else is going to come in here and you have to hope that things are going to stay the same and that you don't just outsmart yourself some, and it happens from time to time that yeah. you get in there and you outsmart yourself a little bit but that's really again the only other thing that would scare me off of brock bowers is that we're about to get a big change in a big turnover it should be a positive in the quarterback market you should sure. get it you should get a potentially a better quarterback whether it's sam darnold or Shador or mm. Cam Ward or you know so, somebody over there that can that can you know play NFL level quarterback and and we'll see what the coach is you know we'll see if it's an offensive hire I uh, said who the OC is so multiple times this offseason about giving Pierce a chance I take it all back <laughs> he's horrible <laughs> his end game is terrible I thought he would have like a get together some advisors you know just yeah what he's doing when he's doing it just it's not well working. Tommy's in there now Right, so just put Tommy on the sidelines. Uh, Drake May, another rookie, up seven spots here. Uh, and Drake May's been out there playing pretty well. You know, obviously it's not resulting in anything good on the win loss column, but watching him play the position, the pocket awareness is really good. The scrambling ability is really good. The movement of of keeping the chains moving, getting the ball downfield. If Jalen Polk could catch the ball right now, uh, there'd be even some better stats for Dude. Uh, Drake May and, and Polk as well could be having a, a mini breakout here through the last two weeks. Drake May looks like a grown man child out there. He looks like a child though. When mm-hmm. this man grows into his body and his athleticism He's 21 he's, years old I think. He's, he's got that he's got the, he's more of a baby face than 22. Brock Purdy maybe. When he grows into it man he is he's a monster. I'm yeah. very impressed what I've seen out of Drake what, uh, what, what's a What's a move you'd be willing to make for Drake May right now? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd be looking to package up some draft picks and go go grab me a Drake May. I mean, Sell I'd, Brock Purdy for Drake May? Nah. I mean, Drake May plus, you know, I I mean, Drake May, Drake May already, you know, he got you 20 points last week. I don't know what he did. I, got, I he think got 20 a, again. You know, before. I mean, that's Brock Purdy ran two in and got 22 points, so... Mm-hmm. I'd be I'd be interested in what my plus could be. Drake May plus what gets me Brock. I mean Brock Purdy gets me Drake May plus what. You know obviously this is not the time to do it. The time to do it was two weeks ago, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. You knew, but it, you know I understand it. You see it coming, see it get on a field. You know especially like in that ecosystem, in that offense with no legit proven playmakers, like the most proven 
professional they have on the offensive side of the ball other than some offensive linemen who are hurt now is Hunter Henry, mm-hmm. right? So he has zero proven wide receivers. He's got Demario Douglas, who's fast. He's got Jalen Polk, who's a quote-unquote gamer, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, he's got nobody to throw the ball to that anybody – has seen do well on an NFL field, right. you know, for more. They don't really so, have a, a, an outside receiver right now. No, they don't have any of that. Which, you know, they, they have Javon have, Baker. They don't have anything. Yeah. And they do have, you know, between Polk and Demario Douglas, I think the, both of those guys are good receivers. I think Polk just needs to figure out what's going on. He hasn't. They ain't not a number one wide receiver in the NFL right now. Right. And so, I mean, Demario Douglas would be a, a sick complimentary piece if you had some a stud running around somewhere. I think he came into the league, came into the season with a bad offensive line and got their center is out for the year mm-hmm. now. It's in probably more uh, injuries that I'm not even aware of right this second. And, the, you know, the, the backbone of the operation was a defense who's the coach is called soft and, and called out two weeks in a row now and un- unsolicitedly called him soft at the first statement of the press conference after the game. So it's just a dumpster fire over there, and Drake May looks good. Yeah. Maybe let that thing bottom out for a second and, he, and you go after. I mean, it's not like he's crushing it or anything, but he looks really, really good. He's scoring more points than Mahomes. Did you trade Anthony Richardson for him? Uh, there's no question that Drake May's a better quarterback than Anthony Richardson out of the gate. But Everyone I, hates Richardson. They, right I, I mean, I'm I'm not going to give up on the upside of Anthony Richardson, but it's not a terrible, it's not a terrible trade for your the the future of your dynasty team. If you have a dynasty team where you can't afford to make mistakes, like I did, I have one where I was like, I got to limit mistakes and I got to make smart moves. And I don't have time. I don't have like the. I'm not in the position to like a home run cut type trade, mm-hmm. you know. So I could definitely trade if I if I'm in a spot where I'm like, man, I really didn't do well in the draft, or I didn't do well on this, or I made a couple bad trades, or I got some really bad, you know, lucky unlucky breaks. I could I could explore giving away Anthony Richardson for Drake May plus. I don't recommend it so because I'm gonna give I up st- a first and Richardson to get Drake May. What's that? That's crazy. So I, on the dynasty daddy, yeah, I don't think he's a first that's in without context. I don't Richardson. know what's going on there. I, I, I would be interested in that deal if, if my team called for it, but I would, I'm so not got it for Gino in a two all day. I'm not going to be all day. I'm not, but I don't, you know, that's not real either. I don't, I'm not going to be exploring many options to get rid of, to sell my Anthony Richardson cheap. Yeah, that's not the that's, that's not the position that I'm going to be in. Can't do that. I'm going to be in the position to be buying the crap out of him cheap and all the other leagues that I don't have him in, which aren't many. But the ones that I don't, I'm going to be looking into the cheap Anthony Richardson, but Every I'm not week, selling him. Cheap. A rich is on the must buy list. And you could, but that I, this is the type of position I'm going to, I'm going to put myself in it each and every week. When I come in here and talk about this stuff a couple weeks ago, I said, I'll take Kyle Pitts cheap. I mean, oh, I'm obviously, not he's, not I'm first, you, like. he's not the he's not the first option at offense, and it, apparently, it has to be a home game for him to get checkdowns from Kirk Cousins. But when he gets the ball, he looks good. Gotta buy Kyle like, Pitts. Kyle Pitts cheap. That you know, that perennial must buy on the FFD. Yeah, and we'll 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 talk Richardson on the next show a yeah. little bit more. Uh, so make sure you like, subscribe, comment below, so you can get that next show right to your little fingertips. All right, DK Metcalf, big riser, up 19 spots, and then Brian Thomas up 38. So trying to keep a tab on the rookies here for you nice. uh, and see see where they're all kind of going. And so big movement from Brian Thomas, as as expected, 312. Some people would say maybe not high enough. I would say not high uh, enough. Needs, needs to be a little higher there. So Brian Thomas got some bargaining power right now. So, you know, I, I don't know that, that anybody's really selling too much Brian Thomas right now right right no people are are really really uh enjoying the brian thomas breakout and he looks good doing so just goes to show you that don't get terribly concerned about route tree or the when somebody has physical tools and has shown they can get it done with what they were doing in college you can kind of put that that to the side a little bit when he's got physical abilities and the tools to be able to do that they're just not what they were asking to do right you know you have to recognize that so brian thomas coming out here and, and being a, a big threat for the Jaguars, giving them everything they needed in a rookie wide receiver. Same with DK Metcalf, really. You know, DK Metcalf's been outstanding this year, uh, now dealing with a little bit of an injury. But Jay, you know, scroll up a little bit where they the folks viewing at home can see who got taken above Brian, Brian Thomas, if you can. So it would be, you know, Laporta, May, McBride, Bowers, and this is tight end premium. Uh, 
I think Tyree, the one that screams Tyree to me Kill. is Tyreek Hill. Right. Well, I mean, it's he's not playing. It's he's so not easy scoring twenty. Right I know to, it's low hanging fruit. He's, right. He's not scoring twenty points a game or twenty five points I, I a do, game. I will say, by the time we're in this situation next year, and Tyreek's a year older, and everybody's concerned that there's no way that that will be happening. No, right? just because. Well, of, and uh, you know, we it did took do a, this draft before a week ago. That's a one more week. Yeah, exactly, week. exactly. One more, and and especially and he drops some touchdowns. He could have even bigger uh, a game where it was Sunday morning, so maybe not a lot of people's watching. But there's no other game on, so if you are watching, you see Brian Thomas looking great. AJ um, Brown or Brian Thomas? That's AJ Brown. That's it's it's pro, it's AJ Brown. But I'm I, I'm a really but that, into, you know that's, I'm really that's, into my Brian Thomas Bri- right now. Brian Thomas, you know, can, can easily be up in this. You just area. went a whole round up there, but yeah, right. that's yeah. Well, I mean, I think we're I think we're all thinking Brian Thomas is a little low. Tyreek's easy one. What about Puka? Tyreek is an easy one, and Puka. I mean, that's. Uh, I think that's neutral for me. I, I mean, was, he hasn't done anything this year. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I, that's that's. Yeah, it's hard to say anything negative I'm about. Still, Puka. I'm still. I'm probably still going to ride with Puka. There. Yeah. Brian Thomas has the ability, probably more physical gifts than Puka, but Puka Puka laid it down last year, and I'm not going to drop. I'm not going. He's not going to lose his spot because he's hurt on my team. Yeah, let's keep it moving here. I've got to give my shout out to Kenny Three Sticks over here, moving up 19 spots. Boom, love that. That's huge. How Kenny Walker has looked in this system uh, when healthy uh, has been absolutely outstanding i think kenneth walker if he keeps this up throughout the rest of the season will be up into that area where kyron williams was because mm-hmm. kenny walker RB7. just seven looks the part and is putting up points and bunches as this offensive scheme grows you got an oc who's first year in the nfl call and plays right so as that matures and and he figures things out kenneth walker was the per- perfect fit for what they were. we, we kind of talked about it in the offseason as mm-hmm. as you get into more 11 you spread it out a little bit more it's harder to guard because it's, it's not the old Seahawks of what was yeah. going on. You don't want to spread and, things and out if, and good let luck. Kenny Walker come at you. Good luck. And, and also, for anyone that tries to kill your dreams, that tells you that running backs can't catch, Yeesh. shout out Peter Howard. Always awesome at this. Um, <laughs> but the fact that anybody would ever sit here and tell me that a guy like Kenneth Walker can't be good can't be good because he can't share. catch because the target market share is fucking nonsense and the fact that a player like this is what always bothers me is when you have a player who is as, as good and talented right. at Kenny Walker he can't that learn. just didn't happen to get the ball thrown to him and if he went back to Michigan State they weren't throwing the ball to Eddie. it's not like they brought in another back to throw it to right Kenneth Walker could catch the football he made a sick grab in this fucking game sick grab the perfect way to put it they were not subbing Kenny Walker to bring in a receiving back right they just didn't throw it to running backs that wasn't the way they did it they probably have never thrown it to running backs probably didn't throw it to Le'Veon Bell when he was there and he's the best Rogers receiver <laughs> running back we've yeah. seen in a generation All right outside of CMC maybe Alpha Kamara well true I get but, a little carried away sometimes but yeah no Kenny Kenny Walker right now is you know I don't, I don't know what you can buy him for I mean would you trade I mean DK or Kenny Walker Kenny Walker Kyron or Kenny Kenny. Mm. Whew. Like it. Obviously, you would get something back on that. Yeah. Drake London or Kenny? Mm, that's tough. London beats stacking up catches. Mm-hmm. Dynasty wise. Yes. And you're kind, you, feel, you feel pretty, pretty good about Drake. Just you, you, there's a quarterback in waiting there. Sure. You got a quarterback who's growing, you know. For it, yeah. And I mean, it's, it's again, like, like that was a quick Kenny over DK, really, because of running backs are harder to find when you're talking about stud versus stud. But DK, again, it just cr- criminally all the time undervalued, you know. All he's done is be a stud this year. Yeah. And just, he was a stud last year and a stud the year before that, too. We just get tired of talking about him for some reason. Yeah. Because he, he has yeah. Geno as a quarterback. Yeah. yeah I, don't I don't know. I don't he know. just gets no love. This year in that new system, it's a little bit more opened up, and he was getting more love. And like you said, 19-point jumper here for a DK. And I just yeah. quickly took Kenny over him. And I, I don't know if Drake London was harder. Yeah. How about Jaden Reed up 37 spots? Uh, a, a few behind Brian Thomas, a few behind Kenny Walker uh, coming in at 404, 37 up. Stated on a few shows ago, like, I don't I don't care. This is one of the things where you can take all the analytical stuff and worry about who's there and who's catching what. And I'm just I'm done with it. Jaden Reed is just an electric player. They're going to figure out ways to get the ball in his hands. He's out there doing Awesome shit every single week. 
Yeah, um, and, and I know we got down into four, you know, player 42, 4-4 four, four in the draft. You know, he's up 37 spots, wide receiver 15. Like, I haven't found – I've been looking. And he's nose to nose here with Rome and Rasheed Rice. But, like, I can't find anybody under this group of three players that I would take over this group of three players. Right. Right, so – all the other guys we stopped and talk about, I was finding people below and above that I'd take. Obviously, above is easier, but Lavi just got hurt, missed a game. The Saints offense, first two weeks, they were awesome, and he wasn't even getting the looks. They were going at other places. I don't hate the 4-4 four, four for Jaden Reed. I respect it. I think it's it's earned, and I don't really find anybody underneath him that I'd have to have before yeah. him. No, I, I agree there, and guys under him are Ayuk and, and Alave and Devonta Smith. Obviously, Ayuk just got hurt. Chris Godwin, a little old. DJ Moore. Waddles down there. He could he could potentially put up some some big time Jaden Reed point. points. We'll talk about him on the faller side. Zay Flowers is is showing that he can put up big boy points. Yeah, J, J, Jalen Waddle was Jaden Reed before Jaden Reed. <laughs> right, right. So Rashi Rice up twenty seven spots here continues to be a buy for us. If 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 you're catching somebody on the talking head side that's saying take any first, ship him up, take a first, get Rashi Rice. We could see how that offense just it you know. They're just they need they need that Rashi Rice role back in their life, and Rashi Rice is very valuable to the Chiefs right now. Fair. And you know, you could say, "Hey, Juju came out there off the streets and, and did what he's going to do." Yeah, fair enough. But Rashi Rice is going to be the guy who's going to be there doing that for the next however many years. Uh, early season injury, so hopefully next season it's not inhibited of anything that's going on mm. there. And, and we don't know about the suspension, so there's a few things looming there. But Rashi Rice was wide receiver one two you know the first few weeks of the, of the season um, was absolutely outstanding that's a good point i know we got it so real quick rashi rice on ir a suspension looming we just were, were, were a couple of weeks removed from him being like a wide receiver top three in mm-hmm. points per game you know not maybe not, not dynasty but in points per game he was top three with nico and whatever else in the first couple weeks of the season as you get farther along and farther away from the dominance that he showed us in the ppr format and then maybe somebody brings up the suspension, you might be able to get, he might get cheaper and cheaper, you know, is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. So use that to your, your advantage. Right now, the Rushy Rice guy, guys may be a little holding on to him pretty tight. You may see him open up a little bit as those types, if anybody that had Rushy Rice gets closer to being a, a win now team or gets, it, hey, I'm in the playoffs, I could trade Rushy Rice for somebody that can help me now, that might be a window. But if, Dude, if too many trades where Rushy Rice should be clearly the winner on these dynasty daddy trades like yeah it's crazy so use that as your your as as an advantage later you know look for a, a lose now team to buy him from or i mean a win now team the lose now team's probably going to hold him a little closer because they're mm-hmm. losing and it doesn't matter but the win now team might give him up easier right. and then as soon as his suspension talk comes back up then there's a good chance to go buy him again yeah, uh, we got Chris Godwin moving up 56 spots. Obviously, that's you know we, we know that's going to happen. Is is he going to be drafted at at 503 this time next year? I don't know, but it depends on how he finishes. But but I mean, if he if he finishes yeah. like this and Baker's finishing like that, then yes, uh, you know he'll be. I think he'll be 29 going into next next season. So you know that's that's a little risky for a 29 year old receiver going fifth round. Yeah, he'll be 29 in February. You know, but he, he looks good, and we don't know what the plight of, of Mike mm-hmm. Evans is, but, you know, Mike Evans just keeps doing it, keeps winning. We expect Chris Godwin to be up, but that was, that was a, you know, may, maybe a little high for my liking there, but he's, he's like wide receiver one right now. So, you know, kind of is what it is. Like you said, Baker and the OC, if that all sticks together, there's, you know, sure. should, should be able to put two, two, three more years together without much resistance there. Just keeping it moving down the line here. We see Geno Smith up 47 spots. People are, I guess, liking what they're seeing there. And, and a quarterbacks might have got tight, sucked up in this draft. So they felt like they had to come up and grab him. Baker Mayfield was up 23 spots. I know I just jumped around on you a little bit there, Jay. But quarterback 19. How are you feeling about Baker Mayfield right now? As you were a, a Baker Mayfield eh, kind of guy. Uh, Baker, uh, Baker Mayfield or T. Higgins? Two guys you hate. Oh, I mean, <laughs> Superflex is Baker Mayfield. Neither. It's not Baker Mayfield. <laughs> isn't I, Baker or Kirk? Is it's not it's not digesting well for Baker for me. But I tell you what, like just watching the Bucks play, it's it's just it's the craziest perfect fit. And somehow you leave, and and that was my biggest. Like if Canales was still there, I wouldn't have been talking about him like it like that coming into this year. I didn't believe it last year, mm-hmm. you know. 
and then Canales comes in there and Baker Mayfield is transformed and you know Mike Evans is all of a sudden looking like he's 25 again and all this stuff and like so the quarterback whisperer leaves and they, he gets better right yeah. so Liam Liam Cohen comes in here and he gets better so I just like if you watch the Bucks play they beat you up they mm-hmm. re- they literally they beat you up and, and, and it's like it just doesn't I don't know why it just doesn't look like it's supposed to work, but it does. And it's done. And it's and it Baker comes he's leading the league in touchdown passes before this week started. And if you watch him, there's not like, you're like, I can't believe that was so lucky or I can't believe right. that was so lucky. like, it's like, this it's is going to run out. Right. Right. If you watch them play, like the whole team plays like that, they're gritty and he's got weapons and he's like, just, he, he's just making it happen. And it's incredible because at this point you have to root for the player. Yeah. Like I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure, you know, move past the take lock six years ago. I'm on these mics saying, well, not that we got upgraded mics now, you know, but six years ago we're talking about, I'm like Baker Mayfield and, and dynasty asset does not go together. Mm. Cause after his first, he was like getting drafted way up here. And I'm like, these things don't go together. I was right for four years. <laughs> I was right for four years. Now he's 29 and <laughs> jokes on me. Yeah. I mean, you give a first for him right now, right? A late first yeah. jokes on me. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to read some of these other guys that have jumped up here. Uh, and, and just to kind of give you an idea of where they've landed. Sam Darnold was up 107 <laughs> spots to the 809 uh, there. Uh, you, you did Bo Nix or Sam Darnold. That's tough because I Sammy the, D. The, the, uh, the answer should be Bo Nix, but Sam Darnold is, you know, just fine. Bo Nix looks a little erratic, but the legs are really good. Uh, I think the, I think when, he can get it together. He's also the, playing with a bunch of jabrones. And in in this in this situation, Bo Nix is minus. You know, Sam Darnold. They're back to back here. I'm sure Jay's showing you on the screen. He's up 107. Sam Darnold. Bo Nix down seven. Like mm-hmm. this is a bu- buying opportunity for Bo Nix because when it clicks and the passing comes together, like. He don't have nobody to throw the ball to either. Like his, you know. So the fact that they can't get it to Cortland Sutton is amazing, right? Was you know, but he's a rookie. He's all he's running around trying to save his life out there. But he's running around and it looks highly effective. And so, I mean, he ran for seventy yards like two weeks in a row. So like, yeah, that's twenty five and, and twenty six. So everybody's got great buying you know, opportunity potentially for too. If that's all how it all you know kind of goes out there and. Brian Robinson up 29 spots, RB21, 901. Good would have thought him. maybe he would have been up a, a smidge higher there. This is true. Uh, Bucky Irving up 76 spots, so some some weight and some respect on his name. Do- Josh Downs up 37 spots. Uh, I think that'll continue to climb. Now, maybe not because we got the Anthony Richardson situation going on, but we've we've seen Josh Downs be able to be productive. So that 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 gives me reason to like, hey, I'll, I got no problem taking him anywhere in this range here. Because uh, I, I know what can be if, if and when it clicks. Chase Brown at 43. Xavier Leggett up six spots. J.K. Dobbins up 81 spots up into the ninth round. Love it. Uh, Jerry Judy up 39 spots. Uh, that seems you know a little aggressive. Pop Douglas. I was about up, to say it feels a little high on Judy right this Pop second. Pop Douglas up 53. A lot of guys I'd rather have over Jerry Judy right here. Wandell up 78. That's he's way too high here. Wandell and I love Wandell Robinson. Don't I was singing his praises all off season, but uh, that's what you can't take Wandell right there. I don't think. Um, Tyrone Tracy up to eighty two, up eighty two spots to ten twelve. We we saw some good stuff there. Ray Davis up forty nine, uh, and then we got the Darnell Moonies of the world up sixty five spots. Tucker Craft up fifty spots, tight end fourteen, mm-hmm. and then what, what do we got here? Romeo Dobbs up fourteen. Jacoby Myers up sixteen. Chuba Hubbard up 46. Tank Bigsby up 79 spots into the 12th round right now uh, with both of those guys back-to-back picks there. Yep. So that's that's an interesting couple. Jordan Mason, let's see where he uh, kind of ended up here. Am, am I missing him? He wasn't on the list. He right. Didn't, he wasn't in our AP. Okay. We're, with like 16 or 20 rounds of players yeah jordan okay, mason. he went 13 in the 13th round jordan yeah mason. he has he has no up or down because he wasn't gotcha. up so that right. would mean that's an at least 150 points <laughs> spot yeah jump. yeah yeah so uh just wanted to give you guys an idea of where the market's spreading around right now on, no, on the fun. risers that was, um, that was awesome. and and you know to give you an idea obviously jason put some trades up there from dynasty daddy we talked about some some stuff what we'd liked and didn't like and now we're going to head over to the riser or the faller side rather um, and discuss some of those guys 
uh, and the guys that they're around kind of do the same thing. So make sure you like, subscribe, comment below. Jamison Williams up 35 points. Whoa. They're 35 spots. Shout out to J-Mo. Good catch. Um, didn't want to disrespect my guy. Be sure you like, subscribe. We've got a free Discord if you're not in the $5 Holler crew. If you're not in the $5 Holler crew and you listen religiously, why not hop over there, support the team. Uh, give us a five dollar holler. Rankings are being updated currently. Um, we're going to be doing mocks and all sorts of stuff here coming up. Uh, we will be getting back onto the rebuild side of things and doing rebuild shows here, probably as early as next week. Um, so again, you know, you could have some opportunity on the uh, Discord side to have your first be, be have first come uh, priority over there on, on the uh, five and ten, ten dollar holler on the roster review. We got a new tier coming your way. Uh, to get yourself a nice little roster review. All right. We will catch you next time. Go check out the Fallers. Peace. <laughs>